How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to talk to you about 10 insanely fast estate cars that you can buy for under £20,000. And that is because you guys enjoyed my video on fast estate cars for under £30,000 recently. If you want to see the same video again at under £10,000, smash the like button. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> We're going from slowest to fastest in this video, so let's kick it off with the Skoda Octavia VRS in its most potent spec, meaning that 2 litre inline 4 turbocharged engine puts out 241 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.5 seconds, which is not hugely fast, but wait until you see what comes later on in this video. That engine comes out of the VW Golf GTI, but in VRS 245 spec, it's significantly more powerful, 30 brake horsepower to be exact. On release, it was also the fastest Octavia ever, not to mention all of the modifications over the standard car like the variable ratio steering, sportier chassis, electronically locking diff and the stiffer springs to sharpen the handling. Aesthetically it's not a million miles away from the standard car, just a bit more angular and aggressive with the larger alloys too, plus the interior is a bit more GTI-esque just with VRS badging. The starts are on the £17,000 mark with 20k bagging your 2017 example with around 30,000 miles on it. Clutches are known to be weak on these and there have been problems with timing chain tensioners and the water pump as well. Next up with very similar specs to the Skoda it's the Ford Focus ST Estate, which is a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 that produces 246 brake horsepower, which will get to 60 in 6.5 seconds. This is the third generation Focus, and in ST trim it came as both the standard hatchback and Estate in three main specs depending on what you want, ST1, ST2 and ST3, which is actually the same story as the Mark II ST. Irrespective of spec, you get a nice aggressive body kit with the ST alloys as well, and the angrier interior, but one thing that is a bit of a shame when compared with the previous previous generation is the switch to an inline 4 rather than the more fun sounding inline 5. Your 20k will also get you into a facelifted model meaning you get an updated front and rear which both look a tiny bit more focused with extra fiddly bits. 9k is the minimum you'll find these listed for and for £20,000 you get a low mileage example from around 2017. Some noticeable problems include the power steering and build quality issues with the ceiling strips falling apart but the engine is supposedly pretty strong. Jumping across to the Jag XF now as even though it's not the fastest of estates it does does offer a good level of practicality and efficiency with that 3 litre turbo diesel V6 that makes 271 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5.9 seconds. This is a competitor to cars like the BMW 3 Series and Audi A4, but in reality it does lack a bit of out and out performance when compared with them. Instead it makes up for it with a bit of that nice jag interior and the fact that aesthetically I do think it looks mad cool in a state spec. It was actually called the Sport Brake and it is genuinely very practical with more loading space than the BMW 5 Series and the Mercedes CLS Shooting Brake and it also got decent headroom too so though it isn't so quick it definitely has benefits as a family car. These start at around £8,000 but 20 grand will get you a 2013 model that's on around 30,000 miles. Squeaky and rattly interior and electronics are the main two consistent complaints that I could find by owners on forums. The Seat Leon Cupra 300 Estate is basically Seat's answer to the Golf R Estate, which is interesting because guess which car's up next on this list. Anyway, on the set, it comes with a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 that makes 295 brake horsepower or 300 PS, hence the name, which takes to 60 in 5.5 seconds, with a core difference between it and the Golf being that it's front wheel drive only. You can actually get it in all wheel drive too, but that's out of our price range. Though it definitely is a very quick estate for the money, it does lack a bit of performance when compared with both the hot hatch version and more importantly, the rapid Cupra R but then you are getting a nice big estate for your money so what can you expect? It's supposed to be a good mix of practicality and efficiency as opposed to out and out performance so don't expect it to handle like the Focus for example. Though these aren't hugely common you can get into them starting at around £18,000 with £20,000 getting you a 2018 example with around 40,000 miles on the clock. Timing chains and DSG auto boxes are the main things to watch out for on these as well as high oil consumption. As promised next up we have the VW Golf R Estate which is the more sensible version version of the hugely popular performance hot hatch, so popular in fact that it's among the most stolen cars here in the UK, with some people calling it the modern day Sierra Cosworth. Either way you get a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 putting out 295 brake horsepower, of course because it's shared with the Seat, but because of that all wheel drive it will do 0-60 in 4.7 seconds, so we're at sub 5 territory before we even reach the top 5 in this list. The story is very similar to the Cupra with uprated everything, good road holding and a nice interior, but what's particularly nice about it is the dynamic chassis control which will let you put your estate into race mode which is always fun. 
£20,000 will get you into one of these, with £20,000 getting you a 2018 model with around 30,000 miles on it. The stock clutch is known to be pretty weak on these unfortunately, but the benefit of the estate over the hatch is that it's generally less stolen, less written off and more sensible. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are, a quick reminder, if you want to see this video again at under £10,000, hit the like button, it'll do me a massive favour. And if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe for two videos every single week. We're on to the top five now and kicking us off, we have the F-Series BMW 335D, which is as close as you'll get to a diesel M3 Touring with its 3-litre twin turbocharged inline 6 engine that makes 308 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Despite being a BMW, which is typically rear-wheel drive, the 335D comes in all-wheel drive instead, helping it with that rapid 0-60 to and to aid handling, BMW focused a bunch on getting the steering feel right, which was a key criticism of the previous generation. This is paired with a completely new suspension and ARB setup, which gives the car better handling too. Because it's all-wheel drive though, and with an engine up front, some long-term BMW owners did complain about understeer, but to be honest, the car can kind of perform how it wants, as there isn't a direct competitor of any form in its counterparts, at least in terms of power. Only now that the M3 Touring has come out has the 335D and 335i been toppled. These start at around £13,000, over £20,000 you get a 2017 model with around 70,000 miles on it. That new suspension setup is also a source of trouble for some owners, and there have been recalls around the EGR valves and coolers, as well as a steering rack. Despite having four cars left on this list, we only have two manufacturers, and the first of the two is Audi, with its stunning B7 or second generation RS4 that hosts a 4.2 litre V8 engine, making 414 brake horsepower, which you get it to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Of course, this gen RS4 came with a saloon and cabriolet example as well, which is a step away from the estate only RS cars of the past, like the RS2. But to be honest, if I was getting into one, I would have to have the Avant anyway. And compared with many of the cars on this list, it will perform incredibly well when pushed, proven by its Nurburgring time, which is faster than the E92 M3, the Honda NSX, and the Lamborghini Diablo. It really is a bit of a beast. Add on the understated but still nice wide looks, both outside and in, and you've got a proper fast estate formula. £12,000 a minute you'll find these listed for, and for £20,000 you'll get a 2006 model with around 80,000 miles on the clock. It's got a super reliable engine under the bonnet, but coil pack failure and carbon buildup is known, the latter particularly on city cars. Kicking off the top three, it's time for the W204 C63 AMG with that ridiculous sounding 6.2 litre V8 engine that makes 450 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds, which is a mega amount of speed out of a family wagon. That engine really is a party piece, considering it's naturally aspirated when compared with generations since that come with turbochargers. It's mad to think that that kind of engine and sound could come out of a car with 1,500 litres of boot space with the rear seats down. It was spending a lot on fuel given it's supposed to be around 20 miles per gallon, but given it's the first ever car built entirely from scratch by AMG for Mercedes, I don't think you'll mind too much. And though it does have insane performance, it's interesting to see that it's still 9 seconds slower on the Nürburgring than the RS4 just mentioned. These start around the £15,000 mark, and for £20,000 you get a 2011 example with around 90,000 miles on it. It's actually got great reliability, at least in terms of that engine, but some unlucky owners have suffered the dreaded head gasket failure, crankshaft wear, leaking intake manifolds and the overheating of the gearbox, but none of these are hugely common. We've got another Mercedes taking second on this list, the E63 AMG, which is ever so slightly older than the C63, but matches it to 60 at 4.5 seconds thanks to its 6.2 litre V8 engine that makes 506 brake horsepower. Pretty crazy, but still not the most powerful car on this list. That engine is shared with the C63 just mentioned, of course, but it's not quite as powerful or performant as the 5.5 litre block you got from 2012 onwards, but as I said, it sounds ridiculous regardless and is more of an enthusiast's engine. You get a performance pack on these which got rid of the electronic speed limiter, meaning the car could do 174 miles per hour, which is pretty mental out of an estate. You'd also get an LSD, slightly stiffer aromatic suspension, and of course, a bunch of carbon fiber bits to decrease weight and make carbon addicts like me happier. £13,000 a minute that I could find these listed for, and for £20,000 you get yourself a 2006 model with around 80,000 miles on it. The engine is the same story as the C63, but the main repair that you'll get on these is that aromatic suspension, which is expensive to replace, so people often swap it out for coilovers. Taking a well-earned top spot in this video is the C6 or second generation Audi RS6, thanks to its incredible 5 litre V10 engine that makes 571 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in just 4.4 seconds. That engine is very similar to the one that you'll get in the Gen 1 Gallardo, and I've mentioned it before, for a time RS6s were known as the most popular car 
cars on the internet, being hashtagged and liked more times than any other car on Instagram. So the fact that you can get into one for a reasonable price today is not too bad, especially when you consider that newer second-hand examples go for upwards of 120 grand. They've slowly been increasing in price themselves for the past few years, and I'm quite certain they'll be considered a classic in the not-too-distant future, especially given the massive cult following and that ridiculous V10 engine. £18,000 will get you into one of these, so you'll still be looking at relatively high miles for your 20 grand at around 90,000. 17 miles per gallon is what you can expect out of one of these, which is never fun, and on reliability, it's not a terrible story, given specialists suggest the engine is highly under-stressed with the amount of power it puts out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and mass thanks to the patrons as always for making it possible. A quick reminder though, if you are new here, do hit subscribe, and you might want to go check out the previous video on 30,000 pound estate cars up here,